basically we've got a large piece of brass. Um, this is for depthing the distance between a wheel and a pinion on a clock. They're pretty expensive, brand new, and I really like this concept. So it uses ball bearings uh, down at the bottom for the hinge, so you can see the hinge there working, hopefully. Um, so it just needs profiling now, so the centre, large piece of the centre cut out, uh, and then of course these bits which are going to home the uh, actual uh, bars that hold, or the runners, if that, that's the, the official name, so the runners that hold the clock wheels and pinions in place. <laughs> pretty low down on that shoulder I thought I needed it low down so that this could be pulled right into the bearings but actually um, that isn't true I can actually have a nice little bit of a gap I can have more than that really um, but anyway those will do the job um, I'm pretty pressed with my knurling I've not done much knurling before uh, I find these really useful this is a clock making tip um, basically these are pins little taper pins um, you drill through and hammer them all the way home. Now you can see that edge sticking up there. I've just literally snipped that end off with um, some with some pliers. But actually, what you can do is you can literally polish that up, and you can make those literally invisible, so you won't be able to see them. Um, what they're used for is, as you can see there, you've got the holes on the other side which match. Uh, a bit difficult doing this looking through the camera, but. It allows the two parts to meet together absolutely perfectly. So <clears throat> if you look there, I can't move them. I, there's no movement in them whatsoever. They are in the same position every single time. So this is a clock making trick. Like I say, it's to do with, uh, you would do this with frames, clock frames. So you would put the taper pins in so that the, then every time you wanted to drill a new hole for a uh, pivot, you could stick them together perfectly in line. Uh, but it's really useful quite a few applications like this where you want things to line together. So we're on the machine, we're just going for it with this hacks up. It will be done. I'm sure the most observant of you were just screaming at me and realised that I was holding this free piece of metal in the vise on this back edge. So of course what happened on the previous one, when it cut through, ping, that went away and we had a bit of a windmill going on. Thankfully nothing was damaged, including myself. I uh, had my mum on speed dial and she came and saved me. So we're all good to carry on with this one. I've left it short and I'm just going to get the hacksaw in there and literally chop out the other uh, the other sides so to overcome the problem of the um, depthing pin or depthing screw not properly uh, aligning we're going to angle this at 45 degrees and I'm going to uh, basically drill a, uh, an oversized hole here in which we're going to put a small piece of threaded uh, brass bar so that the new brass bar is actually going to be angled uh, hopefully at the correct angle so here we go <laughs>
I think maybe I put a little bit too much on. Uh, it certainly flowed into the gap at first and I touched it a couple more times which I probably didn't need to do. Anyway, we're going to let that cool down. It's going to be a real pain now cleaning this up. Certainly not going to be able to machine clean it, so I'm going to have to hand clean that, fill it up. Okay, so it's cooled down and I'm fairly happy with that. Um, this is the side that I fed in from and I can appreciate that's a little bit thick. But if you look, oops, if you look around the edges, you can clearly see that it has flowed through and therefore um, should have a decent joint there. Right. So we've got some really dirty old pickling solution in here. I'm going to stick the part in the pickling solution for an hour and hopefully clean that up. Pickling solution is uh, citric acid. Okay, so it's just sat now in the pickling solution. I'm going to sit it in for an hour and see if that improves. Right, we're going to try and make the threaded rod now. So I've managed to find a piece of quarter inch silver steel and we're going to try and thread that with this die, which I can imagine could be quite tricky. Let's have a go. Well, we're in. runners now so we've got this uh, silver steel and I've come over to the little cowl's lathe So I've just heat treated these and we get a small file, I'm conscious I don't want to mark these too much but get a small file, you can hear and you can feel that digging in, try it on this side, you can see it, you can hear it slides off the surface. Just going to polish these ends up now a little bit, just aesthetically, so they look a bit better, um, got all this black off. Okay, it's assembly time. interesting now well, there's the unit we're gonna have a bash now at uh, we're gonna have a bash now at actually depth in some uh, old gears I'm gonna try and depth these two um, so let's get cracking I'm gonna stick this one in here so
okay so uh, that's nice I'm uh, I'm impressed with the first one so there you go they sit nicely in the uh, arms of me okay so the two wheels are in there now and it's a case now of bringing these together so this genuinely is the moment of truth fantastic so it works and you can play around that that's quite sensitive I'm pleased with the thread that I've put on there you see a little bit too much this is how finicky they are a little bit too much and they start to bind yeah just again just a fraction of a turn and they're turning nicely so you can then just for those that are uh, although I'm sure if you've got to this point of the video um, if you're not clear how that works so then you would you've got the depth now the distance between these two arbors is the pin so on our um, on our clock <coughs> frames on our frames we can now draw an arc and uh, get the correct depth the position between the two wheels so Really chuffed. It worked. Woohoo!